Hey, today we're going to explore how to get started with the rainbow hat for Android things. Now before we get started, you'll need a rainbow hat attached to an Android Things compatible development board with the Android Things operating system. Now if you haven't done this or you need help, you can check out my previous videos on each of those topics. So what is a rainbow hat? So here's what our board looks like. You'll notice that it just sits right on top of our development board and connects with the 40 pin connection along the back. You can see we have three capacitive touch buttons, three single LEDs, the alphanumeric display, the LED strip, as well as a buzzer and a temperature sensor. So we can really start to do a lot of interesting development work with just this single board. Now that we know what the rainbow hat is and that it can let us do some pretty cool things, let's actually take a look at how we can get started developing for it. To start, we'll create a new project. We'll name the project Hello Rainbow Hat. You can select whatever working directory you want. Once you're ready, go ahead and hit Next. Uncheck Phone and Tablet and select Android Things. For this tutorial, we'll select the latest API because we want to target the latest version of the Rainbow Hat driver. We'll then choose Peripheral Activity because we won't use a UI. We'll skip adding any peripherals because we'll do that in the next section. To interface with the rainbow hat, we'll make use of the open source rainbow hat driver. Now this driver will make it really easy for us to interface with the board. Things like opening a connection, connecting with a button, making a sound are all much more straightforward because the driver abstracts away all the lower level code that we would normally have to write ourselves. To find the driver, search for Android Things drivers in your web browser. You can click the GitHub link featured here. You'll then see the Contribute Drivers repo. And you'll notice a lot of different drivers in there for different peripherals with Android Things support. You'll notice the how to use a driver section, as well as the list of the drivers and what type they are and the change log for them. We'll then click the rainbow hat option. Once we open the rainbow hat section, we get an overview of all the functionality provided. And you'll see that it covers all of the sensors on the rainbow hat board. To use the rainbow hat driver, we'll start off by adding the dependency. We'll start by opening the project's build.gradle file. We're then gonna remove the test dependencies because we won't need them for this tutorial. Once that's done, we can add the dependency that we took from the Rainbow Hat driver repository. Once the dependency is added, we can sync to pull in the dependency. Now that we've added the dependency, let's test it out by connecting to an LED. We'll define a variable named red LED of type GPIO, and we'll set it to null. Now, if you don't know what GPIO is, that's not a big deal. It stands for General Purpose Input Output, and it's the interface used to control the LEDs. Thanks to the driver, we don't have to worry about it though, because we can call rainbowhat.openredLED and we'll have our connection. Now that we've pulled in the driver and we know how to connect to an LED, let's do something interesting with it by making the LED blink on and off. We'll first create a handler called Blink Handler. This will allow us to schedule the regular updates to alternate the value of the LED. Next, we'll create a runnable and name it blink runnable. Within the run function, we'll define our code that will change the value of the LED. Now we'll implement run in our runnable. We'll start by creating a null safe call on red LED because we only want to do any of this logic if we have a valid connection to the LED. Within that call, we're going to do two things. First, we'll define logic to update the state of the LED, and then we'll reschedule the runnable to update periodically. To change the value, we'll simply assign it to its opposite value. So in this case, it refers to the red LED. So we're saying red LED dot value equal to the opposite of that. 
that will essentially turn it on or off depending on its current value. We'll then use our handler and call post delayed, passing in the current runnable and a delay of one second. Next, we'll go to onCreate. After we make the connection to the red LED, we use our Blink handler to schedule the initial running of our Blink runnable. This will kick off the scheduled updating of the LED's value and turn it on and off every one second. Finally, we'll make sure we clean up properly. So in onDestroy, we'll remove any callbacks from our Blink handler so that it doesn't continue to run and we'll then close the connection to the red LED. And that's it. We've now properly cleaned up our use of the driver. Now it's time to try out our code. We'll hit the run button, select our connected development board and hit OK. And that'll deploy to the board. Once the APK is installed, you should start to see the red LED flash on and off every one second. Awesome. We now have a blinking LED on the rainbow hat. Now this is just a small step towards further hardware development and IoT development as a whole, but it's an important one because if you're like me and have never worked with hardware electronics before, it's really that first taste of working with lower level drivers to interface with the hardware directly. So I don't know about you, but I'm really excited about the possibilities that IoT provides and I'm very excited to dive further into Android things. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it was helpful. If you want to stay up to date with future videos and tutorials, hit the subscribe button.